How does Iliquet inspire author Felicia Mihaly? Today on All About Canadian Books, we're going to find out. But before we ask Felicia, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with my latest author interviews and find out the stories behind their books. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm very excited to have author Felicia Mihaly as a guest. Felicia is a journalist, novelist, and publisher who lives in Montreal. She has written 12 novels and will be discussing her latest novel, Pineapple Kisses and Eloquette, which was published by Guernica Editions. And here is what her book is about. 10 years after her picture on a magazine cover made her internationally famous as the darling of Kandahar, Arena moves up north, hoping that new experiences would allow old wounds to finally heal. Yet, in the land of darkness and polar bears, she learns that there really is no place to hide from herself. When she meets Constable Liam O'Connor, her past comes out to challenge her once again. Welcome, Felicia. <laughs> Hi, Kristen. I'm so happy to be with you. Thank you for inviting me to your channel. And I'm very happy to be with you and answer to your questions. And but thank you for your interest in your reading. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I have to admit, Felicia, I am absolutely in awe because you speak many languages. <laughs> I mean, you're born in Romania. How many languages do you speak? I spoke. I, I spoke Chinese and Dutch yeah. <laughs> also. So uh, I taught, uh, I learned uh, French uh, in Romania, English in Quebec, in Canada, mm -hmm. but I have a bachelor degree in Chinese and Dutch as well. <laughs> Yeah. Like, that's incredible. I'm, I'm always so in awe of people who speak another language, let alone as many languages you speak. And I'm very intrigued because not only do you speak multiple languages, you write in, in, <laughs> in English, yeah. uh, Romanian, French, and this, this just... So I'm very curious, how do you, when you sit, sat, sit down to write your books in English, how do you get into the mindset of writing and being creative in English? Um, well, it sounds very complicated, but yeah. it is not. <laughs> you know, I think it's much more difficult to speak a language than to write in that language. Because... Even if you, by, for example, you are English, you write in English, in fact, the creative, the language you use to create the text is not the same that you use to speak because create, create, uh, writing is an artifact. So you need to take the dictionary, to take a distance to the language, to correct, to, re, to, to edit, etc. So this is not a natural process. So it's an Creative language is an artificial language. So I think it's not that difficult to skip the pass from one artifact to another. And based at, at, in fact, most what helps me a lot is the fact that I am a journalist. I was, I worked for a long time as a journalist. So I, I use a very simple, a, a very basic language. I don't work with metaphors, with, uh, um, complicated words my, my idea is that language is has to be like a, like a window clear mm -hmm. to help you to see through to see as far as possible so you don't have to make it complicated i i i love i love it but i'm still in awe of you <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of work you know yes. it is a lot of work learning languages 
But you know, when you start somewhere so high uh, as difficulties, because I learned Chinese and Chinese, I think, I think there is no way to put it how difficult it is. Yes. At any level, pronunciation, writing, meaning, everything is so difficult that when you go back to English, everything is so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. So Felicia, I'm also curious, when you dream at night, what what language do you dream in? Um, <laughs> I think there are not many words in my dreams. Yeah, there are many images. And lately, you know, my parents are dead. They are coming very often in my in my dreams, but they don't talk to me. Maybe, maybe they are confused as well. <laughs> yeah. They don't know how to address me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, now, there's a great story behind the inspiration of your book, Eloquet Kisses, or sorry, Pineapple Kisses and Eloquet. Um, can you share the story behind, like, where you got this idea to write your novel? Uh, this is a kind of sequel to a novel that I wrote uh, in 2007, mm -hmm. a book called The Darling of Kandahar, published yeah. in 2000, 2011 by Linda Lee Publishing. And that book was inspired by, um, by a real fact that I read in a, in a magazine. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I was also studying English at the University of Montreal, because when I came in Canada, I didn't speak a word in English. So I went back to school. And this was for me a kind of exercise, like a, a, um, a student exercise just to improve the practice my English. But at the end, uh, it gave a book and <laughs> Linda Lee uh, fell in love with this book and we published it. So uh, the, uh, the story was a kind of love story, but I don't know if you can name it this way because it happened in three weeks over the internet so mm -hmm. the love story is between Irina a pinup girl and the soldier posted in Afghanistan but then soldier died very quickly so we cannot really talk about the love story but somehow this event this event marked Irina forever in my mind mm -hmm. I mean living this kind of relation of, of uh, you cannot uh, you cannot um, get out without without some consequences mm -hmm. and I try to put myself in her skin and I think it could be quite tragic to live this kind of experience yes then uh, well the reaction was was very good uh, uh, the sales went well which is good <laughs> for the book but uh, and the book was very much read in the French departments at some college, um, high school in Montreal, Dawson mainly. And the teacher once invited me to meet the students who were reading the book. And uh, at the end, I gave them an exercise to try to imagine another end for this book. And at that moment, moment I realized that they were quite unhappy with the end of the book. I mean, they didn't know what what possible happened with Irina after the soldier's death. And they came with ideas that stuck with me. I mean, they were so brilliant. And I, I, I thought, maybe they're right. Maybe I should see what happens with Irina sometimes after this, this unhappy accident in her life. Yeah. And when I went to Nicaluit to work as a teacher, this idea came back and mm -hmm. I thought maybe this is the place for a setting. Mm -hmm. And then I put myself into it a little bit using my own experience as a teacher, as a woman, mm -hmm. um, a, sel uh, um, a solitary woman dealing with all the difficulties, everything that comes with the, the life in a, in a small community up north. Yeah, yeah. So you were, as you were saying, you put yourself 
in into your novel into your character um a lot of yourself like or did the two blur quite a bit there too yeah i had to blur a little bit but yeah. irina is a romanian has yes. a romanian background so her mother is a first generation migrant in quebec yes. and irina came here when she was three years old so mm -hmm. she grew up in a migrant community yeah. uh, her mother is a very present woman in her life a uh, very loving mother but very how to say oppressive mm -hmm. so and this is the way i grew up and my my daughter <laughs> grew up with a very oppressive mother so i know something about being a good mother <laughs> um and then uh, there is all 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 kind of customs uh, ki um, kitchen food um, uh, daily routine so it comes from me i am there i am the mother i am irina i am all of it but in the se in, in the same time um irina is a younger woman mm -hmm. uh, she mm -hmm. has you know another energy another expectation and i try to to become a little bit younger and try to understand how a young woman would understand Iqaluit. Mm -hmm. And as a reader, I think that was one of the things that really struck me was your setting of Iqaluit, like the desolateness of the landscape, the polar north, the temperatures, and you really took readers, uh, certainly myself there, immersed in that experience of the north. What advice would you have, would you give to someone who who wants to go up to Iqaluit and work? Um, first, you have the job that it is really needed there. Yes. You yes. don't have to go as a as a tourist, as an adventurer, yeah. people really need someone yeah. good, someone professional, yeah. someone motivated, lovable, caring. Mm -hmm. And when you have this kind of job, uh, when you interact with the community, when you feel useful, then you are at the right place and you are on the good, on the good way. Mm -hmm. Because solitude, could be quite oppressive. The fact that you cannot walk days and days, you cannot go out of house mm -hmm. because you're you're under you know 50 more 50 degrees below zero. So yeah. it's not easy. Uh, then it is the food. It's so expensive that you have to limit your food like like basic things like bread, uh, milk, and uh, so so you have to deal with the fact you cannot taste. Um, um grapes uh, strawberries uh, so yeah. so uh, th there is a challenge you know to reduce your 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 food to basic things um and then you have to know how to to be very tolerant because working in a small community in a small community in a small community i mean i work at the french school who was a, a small part of the French minority, who was another small part from English minority, another part from bigger Inuit community. So you have to be tolerant and to know how to interact with inside the small family. And you know, family could be sometimes very oppressive. So uh, so <laughs> you have to calm down many times, you know, to try, try to be understandable and uh, tolerant. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm just looking to see what else. Okay. So if, if Arena, if there was any other setting that you could have put her in, um, I mean, you, you put her in the north, which, which yeah. I loved. Where else could you have put her to? Because so many people yeah. try to escape. And as you know, as one of your themes is, you know, we can't escape ourselves. Do you think there's yeah. anywhere that Arena could have gone and escaped herself? Yeah, and Calgary, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> or, or Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I at the beginning I um I thought of going in Calgary to teach because for me it's very important to know the setting very well. Yes. Just not travel one week and then imagining that you know the place. Someone yes. said that in order to know a place, you have to live at least six months in that place. Yes. So you have to take time with the landscape, with people, with customs, with sounds, with food, with everything. When I was in China, I worked in China one year at Beijing, and I wrote a novel called Sweet Sweet China. And I think this is a part of, auth of authenticity, you know, uh, to know the place very well. And I had this idea to move to the West, to know this part of Canada. We mm -hmm. live in Quebec, but this is really Canada? You know, the French community. The, so my dream is to go westward a little bit uh, someday in the future to yeah. know this part of my identity. I am Quebecer, I'm a Canadian, I'm a Romanian, but I'm something more. So I, I have to, to know what kind of roots are there. Yes. And what are you currently working on, Felicia? I'm writing now a French novel. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I have oh, is that all? <laughs> In fact, it is a very old, old project. Um, mm. It is called in French, La Bigame. Uh, in English, I think is a bigamous woman. So a woman who has more husbands, two husbands. How do you say? <laughs> How do you call this in English, La Bigame? Oh, um, like she, like polyamorous. Like she's got. Yes. yes. No, no. She's married with two, two men. Oh, why am I blanking? La Bigame. I think it's bigamous woman, something like that. Oh, oh bigamy, big, bigamist. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, bigamist. Yeah. So it is about a migrant woman um, who is married with someone and came in Montreal, but then he divorced the first, the, the husband and gets in another relationship. But in a way, she is stuck between them. It's like a symbol for the migrant identity because when you leave a country for another one, it doesn't mean you just get rid of it. Yeah. It is still with you forever. Yes. So uh, it will come up in uh, May uh, next year, 2022. Uh -huh. And I'm, uh, I, I hope uh, maybe some English uh, publisher will be interested in this well. project. Well, I, I'm interested. <laughs> I'd love to read it in English. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so Felicia, thank you so much for coming on today as a guest on All About Canadian Books. I really enjoyed um, listening to you, learning more about your book and the inspiration behind Pineapple Kisses in, in Iqaluit. So thank you. Thank you very much, Krista. It was, it was really a pleasure. My pleasure too. And Felicia, I'll put links down below for our viewers. So if they're interested in a purchase, to purchase a copy of Pineapple Kisses and Iliquet, I'm having trouble talking today. There will be that link down below <laughs> and also a link to Felicia's website so you can learn mo more about her. Please come back next week. I'll have another author and another interview. Thank you for watching.